Hey, what's up, YouTube? Balder here, and I am in the F-5. This is a new aircraft from Belsum Tech that just came out for DCS World. It is uh, pretty much an old fighter jet that came out in Vietnam, and it's actually a very interesting plane. I mean, there hasn't been much news about it, or at least I haven't been keeping track of it, but from what I can tell... Apparently there was a lot of hype surrounding it, and that is always a plus, I guess. Either way, the F-5 was a Vietnam fighter, came out in the Vietnam War, and served as an air superiority multi-role fighter, basically specializing in dogfighting, along with air-to-ground missions including rocket barrages and bombings, anything they really need to get the job done, and it's not a bad plane. However... From what I can tell, or at least in my opinion, it its role in the Vietnam War wasn't really its popular point. The popular point was probably in Top Gun, where they used the F-5 as the enemy Russian fighters and they called it the MiG-28. Strangely enough, they do make a lot of references to this, a few nods here and there. I mean, for example, they do have the paint scheme for the MiG-28 if you want to uh, get into that, which I think is absolutely badass. So, without further ado, I think we're going to take off. The startup procedure is actually pretty interesting. So, what you have to do is that you have to turn on the batteries, the generators, and then uh, the boost pumps. Pretty simple stuff. You might want to turn on the oxygen as well just in case you want to go to higher altitudes, right? Alright, so after that you actually have to do a start, um, you have to do an air start. To put it simply, you need air to start an engine. I should probably make a video explaining it more in detail when the time is right, but for now what I'm going to do is that I am going to uh, connect the ground air supply and what this will do is that it'll pretty much give you what we call an air start. Basically hooking up a hose, filling it with air, and it goes into the high pressure bleed valve, which starts up the engine. So now that it's connected, we're going to go ahead and apply the said ground air. The engine's starting, so I'm going to push the engine start, and I do believe it's, uh, there we go. Tried to figure out the right, uh, button. But either way, we got the engine started. Yay. Alright, there we go. Now we are going to go to the ground crew again, get the ground supply, apply it once more. Copy. They're going to start it up. To push the engine start. And get the other one working as well. All right, there we go. Engine is pulling up wonderfully. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, I'm not going to bother with the uh, radios and whatnot. I'm just going to disconnect the air. That's all I need from them. So now we're going to taxi to the runway. We're at uh, Nelchik's airport. Alright, so like most American planes that you have in DCS World, you have a switch to get to ground, um, 
you have a switch that'll uh, activate the nose wheel steering. I have this thing uh, keyed to my hotas on one of the buttons, so don't have to worry about that too much. But one thing you will know is that it is pretty finicky, so you have to keep that in mind. Also, since I don't like looking at a blank screen, might as well uh, be looking at a red dot, because why not? You can also turn on my RWR, it'll take a little while for that thing to cook up. But there aren't any planes in the air, so that's kind of uh, you don't really need it. I can activate the attitude indicator as well such. Just very basic things. And what else do I need to do? Oh yeah. Pitch trim. Let's not forget about that one. There we go. Set it for takeoff. We are ready. And I feel the need. The need for speed. Let's go ahead and get things started. Uh, apparently, I guess it's the boot up sequence. What's interesting is that the RWR in the F5 is more advanced than the RWR in the 1980s MiG 29 and SU 27s. I have no idea why. Probably because Americans excelled in such technology, I have no clue. Caution light is bugging me, and oh boy. Alright, you cannot let go of the, uh, <laughs> of the nose wheel steering as it stands. Because once you let go of it, then you will. When you let go of it, your nose gear will lock in the position that it was left, so you need to align yourself perfectly with the runway, as in perfectly square with the runway, to get the best effect. And if we're talking about landing, I have yet to perfect that in the F5. I just haven't had enough time, but this looks... Um, pretty good. Now when it comes to taking this plane off, you'll notice a few things. If you were to go full afterburner, like such, you'll lose some power in the engine. I have no idea why, but the way to counteract that is to slowly apply some thrust, then slowly apply some more. you get the desired effect, then the afterburner will come on, and there you go. Now we are rolling. You want to rotate it about 150 or so knots. Everything is mechanical, not really glass in here, so once you get to that, you rotate. Be careful of your pitch. Let it gear up, and get your flaps up as well. Alright, flaps are up, gear are up. Why the speed brakes were out, I have absolutely no idea. It's probably something I need to look into, but I don't think I've taken off with them, because if I did, that would have been a very short flight. But here we are, we're in the F5, everything is good to go, all systems are green. I may have taken off with the spoilers or the air brakes, but it doesn't matter too much. But yeah, this thing is actually quite maneuverable. It's probably around MiG-21 maneuverable, 
which is more maneuverable at high speeds. This one seems to be pretty maneuverable at low speeds. Relatively. I mean, if you pull back the uh, throttle, you can tell the things get a little bit shaky and it doesn't like it too much, but it still gets the job done. As it stands right now, it's a very interesting plane. It is a plane that I wasn't really expecting. I mean, I heard the announcement from Belson Tech, but even then, it caught me by surprise. Still, I have to say this is one of the better Belson Tech models that they came up with. And why do you say that? Oh, well, for one, they actually have training missions. That's like, that pretty much makes them better than all the other Belson Tech models. Who'd have thought, right? That is one thing I give kudos for. I don't know if I kept bitching and they started to take notice, or if that's been a common complaint and that they decided to fix that, or they decided to no longer be lazy and actually come out with a uh, training with training missions. I have absolutely no clue, but it doesn't matter too much. If you're wondering what just came out of the nose, that is pretty much the. Uh, I don't even know what they are, the gun extenders? Yeah. You have dual 20mm cannons. I can still see the tracer rounds. Okay, that was pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do some mountain flying and see how good this is. Unlike the MiG-21, this thing does not have an issue with trying to pull up. Not in the slightest. You also notice that the uh, bubble, or the uh, part of the turn coordinator, is also in the center console, and it's pretty much in the center. I don't know if that's a bug, or if it's intentional that way. But so far, this thing is actually a pretty good fighter. Pretty maneuverable. It is very deadly with its guns. The missiles, uh, they're not something to uh, brag about, because I'll get to that later when I show you the air-to-air -air segment. Basically, the missiles are old Vietnam-era AIM-9s. What that basically means is that they are slow. Literally, a MiG-21 can outrun it. And if the said fighter jet cannot outrun it, then the it will pretty much follow any flare that it sees. It'll, it'll jump to that said flare at the first moment it gets. So you can't really rely on missiles. This is a more of a getting close and get them with your guns type of aircraft. And that would make sense. One thing I would also say, if you've ever played the MiG-29 over the hump mission, in the second mission, you'll have to fight the F-5s, and the easiest way to take them out is to go at them BVR. The uh, campaign becomes a little bit more difficult when you go up against F-4s, because those things actually have BVR capabilities, but if you fire at them with an R-77, they're pretty much no match. It doesn't become difficult until you have to face F-16s, which does happen down the road, but, you know, then again, that's kind of how DCS campaigns go. Whoa, don't want to lose any type of stability. Also, the climb rate is not too bad either. I don't know if it's MiG-21 uh, worthy, but the climb on this thing is pretty ridiculous. I haven't tested it against a mountain, but we shall see. This is my ultimate test. If I crash in the mountain, it was not a good plane. Can you, of course? I 
I'd say it climbs quite well. Let's see how far it actually climbs. I always wonder what it would be like to be a uh, fighter pilot in Vietnam. It probably wasn't a walk in the park, and I have eternal respect for those guys. Now I'm going to go into a stall. Alright, time to push my nose down. something incredibly stupid. Alright, needless to say, it's a pretty good model. I would say that they have a few bugs that they need to work out, but it's pretty rock solid. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to combat. Alright, so what we have here is that we have a little target to our 11 o'clock. A Tupolev bear that we're going to be taking out. Now, when it comes to things such as radar, it's a little bit finicky. I do need to do a little bit better button mapping, but to put it simply, the radar is not the most spectacular thing that you can have on this aircraft. It's just there to figure out where the enemy is. Once you get the enemy in your sights, then you use a said radar to walk onto it or home in on it. Now, if I if it were up to me when flying this plane, I would definitely turn my radar off once I have visual on an enemy, because if you want to do anything in these Vietnam era fighters, you definitely have to realize that they don't have much range. You need to take people out stealthily. See, as it stands, um, I haven't even found this thing on my radar. I don't know why. I need to play with it for a while, but either way, this thing's in my sights. Just going to lock onto it. And Fox 2. Now you're going to see what I mean. Oh, it actually hit. Huh. Did they improve it? I have my doubts. But either way, these things are notoriously unreliable. This is literally the first time I've ever been able to land a hit with this aircraft or with these missiles. The guns are quite a bit more reliable if you uh, want to go that route. I don't even know why I'm adding an insult to injury. I just blacked myself out. Alright, so, no more fooling around. I destroyed that thing. Let's go ahead and go into a dogfight now. Alright, so now I'm going to be doing some interception. Well, not really interception, more like a dogfight. But I see a contrail over there. Condensation clouds always seem to give people away, don't they?
All right, there we go. I do see my uh, enemy on the radar. All right, so now that I locked on, basically you want to keep that bullseye in center with the uh, little reticle over there. And that'll lead me to the aircraft. It says that I'm in range, but, you know, don't listen to that thing. Never fi um, fire at full range on anything unless it's like an R-27 and you need to suppress your little uh, fighter. Either way, this is my F-5 versus a MiG-28. This guy's close enough for missiles, but uh, worth a shot, right? Keeps trying to stoop me down to his level, that's not going to work. I'm gonna fire on him. No more fooling around. And of course, that one was, uh, I fired it too late, so what I need to do is that I need to get in and go in with my guns.
we go. Is he still flying? There you go. That ought to fix that small little problem. That guy does not know when to give up, does he? And that only took forever. That guy was tenacious. Anyway, this is the F5 versus the F5. Apparently, the F5 won. Or the F5 won against the MiG-28. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed. This is a small little glimpse of the F5. I don't know if I can do a review. I've been so busy for the past few months that it may not be that much of a possibility. Plus, next weekend, I am going to be gone on a small little vacation just to, you know, take a day off. But, hope you enjoyed. I do think I'll try to push out an Aerosoft video for Flight Simulator 10 after this. But that said, like and favorite this video and subscribe. You guys, have a nice day.